Layers are a powerful feature in Photoshop. They're going to play an integral role both in photographic manipulation and in illustration. Let's take a look at what they can do. The majority of the options in this menu are pretty straightforward. For the most part, this menu helps us organize our work. Layers themselves are a great tool that allow us to add and remove areas of our image in a non-destructive manner. For example, we can use adjustment layers to color correct our work using several different functions without harming our original. We can also readjust the color corrections at a later time before committing them to a final output. So to add a new layer through the menu, we can select the New submenu and then decide what we'd like to add. We can also group layers here or duplicate the background. Right below that is Duplicate Layer, which will make a copy of whichever layer we have selected. If you look a bit below this area, the options for New Fill Layer and New Adjustment Layer are here. Further down you'll find Smart Objects and Video Layers. A smart object is basically a protected layer. In previous videos we've talked about destructive editing. This is what happens when we alter an image and then save over the original. Non-destructive editing, on the other hand, includes all alterations that take place where we leave the original image intact. With that in mind, a smart object is a kind of protected layer which will keep whatever information is inside it as the original. So we can transform a smart object and this will be applied to the smart object itself, not to the original image. Let's take a quick look at what I mean. If I copy a small section of this photo and paste it into its own layer, and then convert it to a smart object, I can use transform objects which would usually be destructive since we are applying it directly to the layer. In this case, however, the smart object is protected, and if we double click the smart object icon, we get a short pop-up window from Photoshop which tells us just to save whatever changes we make, and we're taken inside the smart object where our protected information is stored. Any changes that we make inside the smart object area will be reflected in our main image as soon as we save. One cool new feature of CS5 is that video layers can be imported as well. Once we choose a video to import, we can open the animation window and adjust the timeline to the exact frame that we'd like to display. Let's talk about arranging our layers. After you've worked in Photoshop for long enough, you're often going to find yourself immersed in more layers than you'd care to count. It's extremely important in a production environment to keep everything organized. You never know when someone else is going to work on a project with you, and you have to decipher the chaos that is present in your work. Even if you're working freelance or on a project just for yourself, you may want to come back to a piece years later, only to find that when you open it, you have no idea what's going on. Force yourself early in your career to maintain order within your work, and you'll save loads of time. We begin our organization with groups. In Photoshop, a group is just another name for a folder. You can organize layers in different folders to keep them together. Sometimes I'll group all text together, or all items that appear on the front cover of a DVD slick that I'm working on. Whatever your method is, just be sure that you'll be able to easily figure it out at a later date. The only hard and fast rule is that layers on top cover layers below. So if you have a bunch of titles and a bunch of images all on the same page, make sure that all of the titles should be visible above all of the images before you group them together in a folder above the images. We can move layers around either by dragging them in the Layers panel or by using the Arrange command here in the Layer menu. We can also link layers, which essentially locks layers together so that if you move one layer, all linked layers will move as well. We can merge layers, which will combine several layers into one, and we can also merge visible and flatten images. These options do virtually the same thing. They take all of the layers in your image and combine them into a single layer. The only real difference is that Flatten Image will always save the compressed image as a background layer. The last thing you can do in this menu that I skipped over is that you can make masks. These will be based on whatever area you have selected. Layer masks are raster base, that is the quality of them will vary based on your resolution and you can change them by painting and erasing in the mask area. Vector masks on the other hand operate independent of resolution. These masks are created and edited with the pen tool. Even though there isn't much experimentation to be done in this menu, don't underestimate the importance of keeping your work organized. The first time you have to spend 45 minutes deciphering someone else's chaos, you'll be glad that you spent a few extra minutes learning the ins and outs of the layer menu. Next time, we'll be investigating selection options. Until then, please comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions you have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.